So Adobe Fresco came out for the iPad this week, and is it going to be the Procreate killer that everybody thought it might be? Who's going to win in the battle between the reigning champ Procreate and the new contender Adobe Fresco? Well, I'm BJ Dell, and I'm not going to be like those other YouTubers that tell you to stay tuned to the end of the video to find out which one I choose. I'm going to tell you right up front, it's Procreate, but if you want to find out why and see some of the features that Fresco does have to offer, keep watching. Okay, so Adobe Fresco launched this week in the App Store, and a lot of people are excited for this one. They've been waiting for it. So this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the basic features and tell you why I think Procreate is still the go-to app for art on the iPad. Now, this is available in the App Store. You've got to have iOS 12.4 or above, only on the iPad. And for the best drawing experience, they recommend using the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. And this is a free app to download, but of course there are catches to that. So you do not get the premium features with the free version. Uh, you can only export basically flat files at the screen resolution of the iPad. So you do not have high res file export options available. There's also some brushes that aren't available in the free one. So to get the paid pro version, basically you either have to have a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, which full disclosure, I do just because I use a lot of the different apps. I use Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, InDesign. I've been playing around with the character animator. And then of course I use Premiere to edit these videos for YouTube. Or if you don't have the Creative Cloud, you can get this for free for six months. And then after six months, you have to pay $9.99 a month, every single month for the rest of your life for the privilege to use the app, which is just crazy to me. Uh, Procreate a one-time fee of $9.99 and they include so many updates, so many you know additions for free over time that it's just a no-brainer to pay that one-time fee instead of paying you know the exact same $9.99 every single month. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Fresco and check out what this looks like. So this is the main screen that comes up when you start the uh, Fresco app. The first thing right off the bat I want to talk about, this little icon up here, what's coming to Fresco? So view features. So what's coming to Fresco, when we click this, we're going to see basically things that are not in Fresco right now. So Fresco is made by Adobe. This is not an app made by some, you know, third world uh, software company just putting stuff out. This is Adobe, and I find it, you know, kind of frustrating and disappointing that these features aren't included straight from the get-go. So the features that are not included, perspective drawing, that's included in Procreate. Symmetry drawing, once again, included in Procreate. Clipping masks, Procreate has that. Shapes and lines, color themes, and palettes. So everything here Procreate has, of course, you know, it took Procreate years to get that, but when Procreate has become kind of the industry standard for the go-to art app on the iPad, uh, just kind of boggles my mind that this being Adobe, this stuff is not included right from the rip. So just knowing that right off the, the bat, you don't get those, those are coming later is uh, something to definitely look out for. So uh, let's go ahead and let's make a new canvas here. And since I do a lot of merch by Amazon work, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers on the channel do too, I usually start stuff out with uh, 4,500 by 5,400 canvas size, which is gonna come in interesting here in a second. So let's go ahead and create document. It's gonna launch. So this is what Fresco looks like. Uh, the layout, as far as the, the user interface, it's really clean. Um, it's not super cluttered, but in comparison between this and Procreate, I do find Procreate's uh, quite a bit cleaner. You know, different menus being hidden up here. I don't mind the, the pop-ups for those menus. And, you know, after using this for uh, four years, I've become pretty accustomed to where everything's at. And I just like the, the main focus of everything is just your canvas to uh, over here on Fresco. You know, we've got the toolbar over here that it kind of has the same layout uh, as Photoshop. Of course, it's missing some of the features, but it kind of has that same layout. And then, of course, you've got the, the layers over here. Uh, and then another menu up top here. So the, the first thing that you can tell, I do not like this gray background. I like to have that super high contrast between the black background and the white. So the first thing, if you do uh, open up and download Fresco, first thing I would recommend going up here to the settings, the little gear icon and going to app settings. 
once you're in there, if you go to color theme and go to dark, this switches everything to that dark color theme, which kind of mimics, you know, Procreate. I think maybe they set it to light to begin with just because they don't want to look too much like Procreate right off the bat. So that might be the reasoning behind that. But I would change that just because I prefer, uh, you know, just working with that darker color background lets me see everything just a little bit better. So going through some of the menus here, the first thing over here we have is our pixel brush. Now with the pixel brush, basically this is a raster brush. So uh, as you zoom in, you know, it's going to pixelate. This is going to be the same type of brush that you use with Procreate with, you know, using with Photoshop, so on and so forth. There are a lot of different brushes available and I do like the, the comics option. There's a, a sharp anchor in here, which gives some really nice tapers and lines. And I do like the look and the feel of the brush down here on the brush settings. You do have a lot of control, which I like as well. The, the shape dynamics, you can control everything with um, you know pen pressure on the size jitter or you can change it to tilt so there's a lot of different settings here that you can kind of play around with and they're you know pretty robust as far as dialing in that brush to exactly how you work the other thing that's really cool and I love and this is not in Procreate right now, but it is coming with Procreate 5. So I can't give Fresco really a leg up on this just because it is right around the corner with Procreate is you can actually add in your own brushes. The, these are basically Photoshop brushes that it will import. So you can get more brushes here or import from your files, which I think is super, super cool. It's great because I've been using Photoshop for so long. I've got a huge library of brushes and I actually loaded some in here. And this is kind of one of the, the other areas of problems that I saw right off with the the app itself. So these brushes are the the Flyland Photoshop brushes from my art buddy uh, Brian Allen. He's actually the uh, artist that came up with the concept design for the gritty mascot. Uh, so these are his brushes and the the pack that I downloaded and imported here was 128 brushes. So loaded them in, walked away out into the kitchen to make a sandwich, come back. And of course the iPad went into sleep mode. When it went into sleep mode, turned it back on. It basically aired out loading the brushes as it went into sleep mode. So I tried it again, not thinking that it was sleep mode that was doing it. So you'll see there's a, a pack here of 15, 26, 31. And then finally with the 128, I decided, okay, I need to sit here and just basically tap on the screen until all the brushes get loaded in. So that's what I did. That's why those are there. However, I've got all these other three packs of brushes here and there's no option to actually go in and remove or delete these brushes. You can't do anything to remove these. Even when you go in here, like there's nothing that you can actually do to take these back out. So I didn't know if I was doing something wrong. I looked it up on Google and came across this, how to delete imported brushes in iOS for iPad on the Adobe forums. This was back in 2017. So this question was actually asked um, based around Adobe Sketch. And the answer was, right now brushes cannot actually be removed inside of Sketch. They must be deleted either through the libraries tab and the Creative Cloud mobile app, or by logging in with your Adobe ID to the website and deleting them there. So I'm assuming, I haven't tried this, but I'm assuming that's how you have to do it in fresco as well which is kind of disappointing uh because you know with photoshop moving around brushes deleting brushes adding brushes is so easy the fact that you cannot delete these from inside the app i think is a big oversight and hopefully that'll be fixed later because otherwise you know if you mess up like this you're going to have a lot of stuff uh, taking up space i even went into files to see if you know the uh the program Fresco made a file folder on my iPad and maybe stored them in there and I could manually delete them, but it does not. So there's no way to get to those. So I think the, the option of using that creative cloud and going in and deleting them is the only way, which like I said, is a big oversight and a pain in the butt. So that is it for the, the raster brush. Uh, the next one down here is the live brush. Now this is going to bring up an interesting thing too. So let's hit this. And this says we need to reduce canvas size because the canvas size is too large to support these brushes. So like I said, when I started this canvas, it's a 4,500 by 5,400. I don't really consider that huge by any means, um, but it says here that we need to have a maximum size of 4,096 pixels to use the live brushes. So using a 4,500 by 5,400 will not even use the live brushes. So we cannot use this canvas size. We've got to make a smaller one. 
Uh, full disclosure, I'm using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It's the first gen model. So I don't know with the program itself if it's basing this off of the processor or if it's basing it off the RAM. If it's basing it off the RAM with the exception of the uh, new uh, one terabyte uh, pro model you know all the ipads have the same amount of ram so i i really don't know if that's the case if it is and it's using ram if you have the brand new ipad it's going to show you the same thing which is kind of disappointing too because like i said 4500 by 5400 is not crazy big but i'm sure because of the way the live brushes work that's why they had to you know put a limitation to it so let's go ahead and make a new canvas here current screen size so this one's going to allow us to use the live brushes so we can go in here so with these you've got uh watercolor options and then you also have oil so these are really cool and i am impressed with how these work let's go ahead and change the color so we can see a little bit more what's going on so i am impressed with the way these work and the way that everything kind of flows in together let's change it to a wash soft and you'll see as I kind of press down and go, you can see the way and why they're called live is because these react really like a regular, you know, watercolor would. You kind of have that bleed and that flow to the watercolor, which is really cool. Uh, same thing with the oil colors, the way that those build up. They've got a, a really nice setting to them as well. For me personally, I don't do a lot of digital painting like this. So I would not use this all that often. Uh, for the people that do a lot of digital painting, I think this might come in handy. And you see how these kind of interact with each other. It's really cool. It's, you know, got a lot of processing power behind it. And there's a lot that goes into it to make this possible. However, for me, like I said, my flow work and the way that, that I design, I would not use these. I think this is the main kind of drawing point or the, the selling point of Fresco is to be able to do this kind of stuff. However, it's not something that I would use. So to each their own on that, if this is something that you would use, consider that as like one of the pluses from Fresco. One of the other pluses is this next brush down here, which are vector brushes. Now you'll see with the, the raster brushes, you do have the ability to add brushes. These, the uh, live and the vector brushes, you do not have that same option to add brushes. These are basically what come with the app is what you get. But with the vector brushes, you do get just a nice vector based line that does not have any rasterization to it. So if we draw, let's just draw a little face here real quick. Just something real fast and cute. And you'll see as I zoom in, we do not lose any line quality. This is an actual vector. So no matter how close we get, it is not pixelated at all. And you'll see as I'm zooming in and then zooming back out, it does it really quick. So there's not a lot of lag as far as the processing zooming in and out. You'll see a little bit of a blur right there, but it's almost instant so you can zoom in zoom out and it doesn't take a long time to you know process and re-render the vector which i think is really cool so one of the other things uh, that's missing from this compared to procreate is i use the reference layer quite a bit to drop in color with this we don't have that so i would have to go to my layers over here duplicate this layer and go down to the bottom one to kind of start coloring this in with the paint bucket tool and with that, it's just kind of some extra steps. Plus I've got this line here, so I'd have to select this and delete it from there, so on and so forth. But I do like, number one, the, the included brushes are fantastic. I do like the ability to, to make vectors like this, but uh, with the work that I do, working in 4,500 by 5,400 and doing mostly print on demand stuff, that size is big enough. I don't have to worry about vectors. So once again, this not something that I would use a lot, but it, it does come in handy. Next up, we got the eraser tool, which the eraser is just a basic eraser. There's no option to change what type of eraser it is. To do that, you would actually have to go back up and select what kind of brush you want. And then there's this little round circle here, which works as a modifier. And then you see here now, it's actually using that brush I was on as the brush for the eraser so that's kind of a cool little shortcut here and frees up you know having an extra menu for the eraser of course here we've got the selection tool uh, we've got the lasso tool and uh, marquee tool here this even though it doesn't have shapes you can make shapes with this so if you wanted to do a circle here you could just make circle uh, with the selection there and then go in and fill this in 
with the paint bucket tool. So that's an option, but it doesn't give you a lot of options as far as shapes. So that's kind of a, a downfall compared to Procreate. Got your eyedropper tool here where you can select. And then of course the camera roll camera or the camera camera roll files or creative cloud as far as importing and inserting a picture uh, up here we've got the undo if you don't want to use the two tap uh, much like procreate you can use two tap to undo and three fingers to redo uh, you've got your help buttons here your export here you can publish and export this it is nice it does have a time last time lapse export like procreate uh, also it gives you the option to uh, export to behance and then gives you the option to export as and then you can do a uh, png or ping jpeg psd or pdf once again these options to export like that only come from that premium version so if you have the free version it's not going to give you the options to do any of that and then you can also go full screen with this so like i said a lot of missing features compared to procreate i think procreate is still the standout winner of course with this you don't have text uh shapes are limited uh the clipping masks haven't made it there yet uh, there's a lot of the other stuff too with uh, procreate being able to do the blur and there's the liquify functions uh so you know like i said paying 9.99 a month for this until you die uh, i think is kind of outrageous when you can get the just overall goodness of Procreate for a one-time $9.99 fee. And you've got to admit the attention to detail and the updates that the Procreate team has done over the years has just been amazing. Still crazy, you know, just seeing everything they come out with and seeing Fresco like this, kind of like a half-baked version really confuses me, especially with Photoshop being announced. It was supposed to come out by the end of the year. I think they've put, you know, work into this to kind of get it out there. So, uh, you know, people will jump in on this and then also maybe down the line have to jump back in on Photoshop. Uh, if we're going to see Photoshop by the end of the year, I don't know. Of course, Photoshop's not going to have the live brushes. It's not going to have the, the vector brushes, but it will have a lot of the other features that are lacking in this. So I don't know necessarily why anybody would go with this other than that live paint or the vector brush. I would say, you know, if you're a big Adobe fan, hold out for, for Photoshop and see what happens. Uh, but even still with that, it's, it's up in the air if, if that's a good recommendation, because like I said, Procreate is just the king of art on the iPad. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, too, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. So what do you guys think? What do you think of Fresco? Have you tried it out? Are you not going to try it out because of the monthly fee? Uh, do you think that's garbage? Because I do, and I'm sure most of you are on the same page. So let me know down in the comments. I want to hear from you. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.